what you're complaining about, John. Oh, you don't, huh? Well, who owns this pawn shop, Paul? You, me, or both of us? We both do. You know that. Okay, then. From now on, I sign checks the same as you do. Now, wait a minute, John. You're getting your share of the profits, aren't you? So you say. Only I don't trust you. I'll get it. Hello. Hello. Wait a minute, this. Is anybody on here? Hello. Hello. Is this Blaine's pawn shop? Yeah, what do you want? Uh, I want to speak to Paul Blaine, please. Oh, you don't care who you speak to, do you? Just a minute. It's for you here. Thanks. Hello? Hello, Paul Blaine? Yeah? This is Boston Blackie. Uh, you wanted me to call you? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I'm sorry about the way my brother spoke to you on the phone. We're having a little argument. That's all right. Uh... What do you want, Blaine? I'd, I'd like to see you. It's important. And, uh, well, could you get down here this afternoon? Well, I don't know. I... Uh, no, look, you got to come. It's awfully important. All right, Blaine. I'll be there about 3 o'clock. Okay, 3 o'clock. Uh, thanks. Goodbye. Hey, what kind of a deal you got cooking with Blackie, Paul? That's my own business. Now, look, John, I don't want any more trouble with you or... Oh, no, well, you're going to get it. Now, wait a minute, John. Don't leave. Stop worrying about my leaving. But just start worrying if I come back. <laughs> And now, back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Oh, there's the pawn shop we want. Two doors down, Mary. Oh, yeah. Why did Paul Blaine want to see you, Blackie? I don't know, Mary. That's what I've come down here to find out. Well, that being the case, let's go in and find out. Here we are. Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Are you Paul Blaine? Yes, I am. You must be Boston Blackie. Yes, and this is Mary Wesley. How, How do you do? Mr. Blaine? Well, you're right on time, Blackie. You said you'd be here at three, and it's, well, two minutes of three right now. I'm generally on time, Blaine. What do you want to see me about? Well, it's this, Blackie. I made a loan of $1,000 on a diamond yesterday, and this morning I found out it's stolen property. Uh-oh. That's bad, isn't it? It's very bad, Miss Wesley. It means I may lose my $1,000. Ooh. Well, what do you want me to do about it, Blaine? Well, I thought you'd take the diamond to the insurance company that carries a policy on it and make a deal so I could get my money back. Oh. Well, I suppose I could do that, but why can't you? Well, they'd have no reason to bargain with me. They'd know I'd have to turn in the diamond to the police. And, well, I was hoping it wouldn't be too much trouble for oh, you to... Oh, Blackie's uh... so used to trouble, he's lonesome without it. Quiet, Mary. All right, but uh, I like that. That's what I like, modesty. Mm-hmm. All right, Blaine. I'll take the diamond. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, here, I have it here in my pocket. Okay, Ooh. Blaine. You'll hear from me tomorrow. Uh, about what time, Blackie? Mm, same time as now, 3 o'clock. Come on, Mary. Uh, okay. okay, see you at 3 tomorrow, Blackie. Goodbye and thanks. Goodbye, and don't mention it. Let's wait here for care, Mary. All right. Blackie, will you be able to get Mr. Blaine's thousand dollars back? I think so, Mary. All I have. That was a shot. And inside the store, too. Come on. Blaine! Blaine, where... Oh, there he is. Blackie, it... Oh. Oh, it, it looks like he's... Dead, Mary. Oh. He has to be dead unless he was wearing a bulletproof heart. Yes, but, but who could have... I don't know. But whoever it was is probably out the back way by now. Well, here we go again. I guess I'd better call Faraday. No, darling, no. Please don't call Inspector Faraday. You didn't have anything to do with this, but Faraday will never believe you. All right, Mary, I guess the best way for us to stay out of this is to get out of here. Hey, Rollins! Rollins, come in my office! Yeah, Inspector Faraday? What about some action on the murder of Paul Blaine, the pawnbroker? Inspector, there hasn't been a thing developed. Oh, just a minute. Faraday speaking. Inspector, got a little news for you. You want to know who killed Paul Blaine, don't you? Sure. Do you know who did it? Well, I know who was in his store about the time he got bumped. Who? Oh. Friend of yours, Boston Blackie. A friend of it? Bo- Hello. Hello. What was it, Inspector? Some guy who says Boston Blackie was at the scene of Paul Blaine's murder. Good. Hey, that's exactly what you want, isn't it? It should be, but it isn't. This is one time I don't think Blackie's involved. And besides, I waste too much time chasing that guy anyway. Gee, Inspector, you must be sick. Maybe that call was a straight tip. I doubt it. Besides, I got a line on Blaine's killer. Yeah, who? Never mind who. But Blaine sent a certain guy to prison about five years ago. 
Last week, that certain guy got out of prison. I think he killed Blaine for revenge. Could be, Inspector, but I'd still like to have a look around Blackie's apartment. Go ahead. Waste your time any way you want. But I'll bet I find a real killer before you find anything on Boston Blackie. <laughs> matter? Uh, oh, nothing, nothing, honey. Something is, honey. You seem awfully upset. What is the matter? You read the paper you brought me? Only the headlines. I don't remember what they said, though. Well, let me refresh your memory just a little. Mm-hmm. Yeah, listen to this headline. Uh. Cops looking for ex-convict and Blaine murder. Oh, yes, I remember that. Well, I'm an ex-con, remember that? Yes, of course, darling. You got out of jail. Let's see. It was last, uh... Uh, what day was it? Last Friday. Oh, yes, that's right. But, darling, what does this have to do with you and then this Mr. Blaine's murder? Well, Blaine sent me to prison. Now the cops are trying to tie me up with his murder. Oh. Mm. The paper says Blaine was knocked off at 3 o'clock yesterday. If I could just remember where I was then, I... Don't you know where you were, Harry? You were with me. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, but where... We weren't anywhere. We were out walking, that's all. Oh, yes, that's right. Where were we walking? Do you remember? Oh, not exactly. Downtown somewhere. Hmm. No, I've got to keep you out of this. I think I know what I'm going to do. What? I'm going to see a fellow named Boston Blackie. He helps guys like me. Well, you can't leave here if the police are looking for you. Harry, I've met Blackie's friend, Mary Wesley. I know her. I'll get her to help me, and she'll get Blackie to help you. Now, Helen, please, can't you remember where you and Harry were, and and at least about what time it was? No, Mary, I can't. All I know is, is that we were out walking. Yes, but where, dear? Just downtown. That's a big help. Now, look. Paul Blaine was murdered at 3 o'clock in a shop on 71st Street. Were you on 71st Street around 3 o'clock? Well, no. Oh, gosh, I'm beginning to sound like Blackie. Mary, I don't know where we were. I started out to see a man about fixing my coat. I think I have his address here in my purse. Oh, well, this might be something. Oh, dear. Oh, yes. Here's his address. 20th Street. All right, now you think you were on 20th Street? Yes. Down there somewhere... But I don't know. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's that other card in your purse? Where? Which one? Oh, guess that's the... Oh, oh, yes, I remember. A sidewalk photographer took our picture and gave us this check. Yesterday? Yes, while we were out walking. Yesterday afternoon. Hmm. Well, as Blackie might say when I show him this, it's a nice photograph. Let's hope it doesn't result in any negative development. Inspector Faraday, this is Rawlins. I'm calling from Blackie's apartment. And guess what I found? Guess. Guess? What am I? A guest star? What was it? A diamond. So what? Well, this diamond is listed as one of the things which should have been in Paul Blaine's pawn shop, but wasn't. Yeah? Yeah. And that means maybe Blackie was... Well, he, uh... He, uh, might have, uh... What are you talking about? Well, uh, you see, uh... <laughs> I get it. Blackie slipped up behind you and has a gun in your back, huh? <laughs> Some cop you are. And I'll just put Blackie on the phone. Sure. Here, Blackie, he wants to talk to you. <laughs> Thanks, Rollins. And uh, don't go away yet. Okay. Hello, Inspector. Blackie, what is that diamond from Blaine's pawn shop doing in your apartment? It's all very simple, Inspector, but it'll sound complicated to you. Blaine gave it to me. Oh, yeah? When? At 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. 3 o'clock? That's when we think he was killed. And I got to tip you were there when it happened. Only I didn't believe it. Why not? I was there. A few minutes before and after the murder. What? And you didn't report it? No, Faraday. And you know why, too. It meant getting mixed up in this, which is something I didn't want to do. I didn't believe the tip I got. And I'll tell you something you won't believe. What? I believe you. How do you like that? Faraday. My, how you've changed. Uh, Never mind about me. You sent Rollins back to headquarters. And with that diamond. All right. Bye. Goodbye. Rollins. 
Yeah, Blackie. Faraday wants you back at headquarters, and you can take this diamond with you. Sure. Okay, thanks a lot, Blackie. Good, uh... Oh, hello, Miss Wesley. Hello, Sergeant Rowan. Come in, Mary. The sergeant is just leaving. Yeah, so long. Bye. Well, Mary, I almost got mixed up in the Blaine murder. Rollins found that diamond Blaine gave me, and Faraday got a tip I was there when Blaine was killed. Oh, somebody's trying to frame you. Well, that means you'll help my friend Helen, doesn't it? What? What friend Helen? Helen Waltham, darling. The one I told you about on the telephone. Faraday thinks her fiancé, Harry Matthews, murdered Blaine. Oh. Oh, yes. Well, that means I... I'd better find an alibi for Matthews that will show him away from the scene of the crime at the time of the murder. Well, all right, then. I know this much, Blackie. Yesterday afternoon, Helen and Harry were walking on 20th Street. Now, that's about five miles from the scene of the crime. A sidewalk photographer took their picture. She thinks about 3 o'clock, and she had a receipt for it. I took that. Here. A picture, huh? Say, I'd like to see it. Maybe the shadows on the street or something on it would give Matthews an alibi. Now... Awfully late. Photoshop is probably closed by now. But if we can get into the dark room, maybe we can bring an alibi for Matthews out into the light. How soon will the picture be developed, Blackie? It should be about now, Mary. I've had the print in the solution about. Uh... Oh, I'm beginning to see something now. Good. I'm glad you took this claim check from Helen so we could find this picture. Mm. Developing that print isn't taking as long as it took us to get in here. That was a tough lock on mm-hmm. the door, Mary. I had a hard time picking it. Yeah, you'll have to buy the photographer a new lock, won't you? I suppose so. Now, let's hope this picture shows something that'll help us. All we know now is that it was taken the afternoon of the murder. Okay, I'm hoping. Look, like there's the whole picture now. It's clear, too. Mm-hmm. Now we'll lift it out of the solution and have a look at it. Here, I'll put it on the table here and hold it down with these weights so it won't curl while it dries. There. Well, it shows Helen and her friend Matthew's all right. Look behind Helen and our boyfriend, Mary. The Leeds Jewelry Store clock and look at the time. Three o'clock. And Leeds Jewelry Store is on 20th Street, a good five miles from where Paul Blaine was killed. And at three o'clock. Tell your friend Helen not to worry, Mary. Our friend Harry Matthews is all right. The clear shot of the clock in this picture put him in the clear, too. Now, back to Boston Blackie. Paul Blaine, pawnbroker, gets Blackie's help in returning a stolen diamond. Just after Blackie leaves him, however, Blaine is shot and killed. Police think Blaine was murdered by Harry Matthews, ex-con, who was sent to jail by Blaine. But with the help of his girlfriend, Helen Waltham, Matthews receives Blackie's help in proving his innocence. Blackie finds a sidewalk photographer's picture of Matthews near the Leeds jewelry store, five miles away from the murder scene, with the hands of the clock at three, which is the time Blaine was killed. So Matthews is obviously innocent. As we return to our story, Mary Wesley is at the Leeds Jewelry Store. And what can I do for you, miss? I'm not sure. Uh, Are you Mr. Leeds? Yes, I am. Well, um, this may sound sort of silly, but I'd like to know about that big clock out in front of your store. I hope you don't want to buy it. (laughs) No, no, I just would like to know how accurate it is. Oh, it's the most accurate clock in town, miss. We have it checked once a week. It loses hardly a second. I see. When was it checked last? Uh, why, uh, four days ago. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, where's the nearest public phone? Oh, if you want to use a phone, you may use mine right there on the desk. Thank you. Oh, that's quite all right. Blackie, this is Mary. You found out about the clock? Yes, it's always right, and it was checked four days ago. Good. Now I'm absolutely sure Matthews is innocent. I'm going up to tell him for two reasons. To make him happy and Faraday miserable. All right, Matthews. You might as well talk. I didn't come to your apartment to outstay you. 
I don't have anything to talk about, Inspector Faraday. You killed Paul Blaine, so you ought to have a lot to talk about. I didn't kill him, Inspector. I, I admit I had a reason. He sent me to jail, but I didn't kill him. That's what they all tell me. Until I prove they're lying. Who's that at the door? One of your pals, Matthews? I don't know who it is. Well, go answer it. But no tricks. Don't worry. I don't have anything to hide. This Harry Matthews apartment? Yes, I'm Harry Matthews. Blackie, for Pete's sake, what are you doing here? Just playing newsboy. Good newsboy, I might say. Blackie, I didn't kill Blaine. Don't let this guy arrest me. Don't worry, Harry. I wouldn't let Faraday do anything he'd be sorry for. Look, what do you mean, I'd be sorry? Harry here is the one who's going to be sorry. He's going to jail. Is he? When was Blaine killed? At three o'clock yesterday. You know that. All right. Take a look at this. What is it? A picture of Harry and his girlfriend walking down 20th Street a good five miles away from the scene of the crime. Taken yesterday, too. There's a date on it. Look. I am looking. So what? So look at the clock behind them. What time does it say? Well, I'll... It says three o'clock. That's right. And do you know what time it is now, Faraday? Huh? What's that it's got to do... time you apologized to an innocent man and got out of here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> um, uh, I'm sorry, Matthews. Yeah, okay. And Blackie, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah. Mm. Thanks, Blackie. You're a big help to me. You've just cost me my only suspect. Don't fret, Faraday. What I take away, I usually put back. I've got another one for you. Come on, Harry. I'd like you to drive me down to see him right now. <laughs> This is Blaine's pawn shop right here, Harry. Thanks for driving me. No, no, no trouble, Blackie. It was nice seeing you, Blackie. Thanks, Helen, and thanks for the lift. Okay. Oh, say, would you wait for me for a few minutes? I'm going to want to get to my bank, and I may not be able to get a car. Sure, sure, we'll wait, but you better hurry. The bank closes in a few minutes. I guess I shouldn't have stopped to pick up Helen. That's all right. We'll make it. How far do you bank? Seven on 25th Street. The Weatherly National Blackie? Yes, Helen, why? Why, that's my bank, too. <laughs> well, we're practically partners, then, Helen. <laughs> yes. I'll be out in a minute. Want me to go with you? No, thanks, Matthews. I like to do things like this alone. Be right back. Hurry, or you'll be too late to get to the bank. All right. Good afternoon. Yeah? What's good about it? Well, that's fine talk. You own this shop? I'm John Blaine, if that's what you mean. I'm Boston Blackie. Hooray. So you're Boston Blackie. So what? So I'd like to talk to you. Maybe about the killing of your brother. What makes you think I killed him? You were having an argument when I called up yesterday afternoon and spoke to your brother. So what? So an argument could end in a killing. So could too much curiosity. Get out of here, Blackie. Fast. Now, is that a nice way to do business, John? Your brother Paul never pulled a gun on a visitor. Get out of here, I said. When I'm finished. You're finished now. Get out of here. Maybe this will help you move. You missed me, my friend. Or should I wait till I try to turn my head? I missed you because I wanted to. But next time... Maybe I won't want to miss. Well, I wish I'd known you were having trouble with John Blaine, Blackie. I could have run out and given you a hand. I didn't mind arguing with him, Harry. It was the back talk from his gun I couldn't do anything about. Blackie, I want to thank you for helping Harry out of his trouble. Well, he's not out completely yet, Helen. What? He isn't, Blackie. Why isn't he? Oh, it's nothing to get excited about. I just wasn't able to prove John Blaine is a 100% suspect. And until I do, Faraday will always feel like Harry here is guilty. Well, as long as you believe I'm innocent. You're safe. Even Faraday has, has to face the facts. You couldn't have killed Blaine. You're too far away from the scene of the murder when Blaine was killed. Oh, say, it's too late for me to get to the bank, isn't it? Yeah, I guess it is. Oh, dear, that's a shame. It is after 3 o'clock, isn't it? Slightly. Say, do either of you have enough money to cash a check if it isn't too big? Well, uh, all I've got is five. How about you, Helen? No, I don't think I... Oh, wait, I might have some. Yes, I... I yes, of course I do. Swell, could you spare 50, Helen? 50? I don't... Oh, what? Oh, dear, what's the matter with me? I drew 100 out of the bank yesterday. You did? Yes. It was yesterday. I remember I got to the bank just at closing time, and I had to argue with the man at the door to let me in. Here's the money you wanted, Blackie. Oh, how much did you ask for? Just 50. Oh, yes. 40, 
fifty. Here, you can make a uh, check out later. All right, thanks. That's all right. I could give you more if you wanted it. No, thanks. You've given me plenty already. Hmm. That sidewalk photographer must have a mania for putting fancy locks on his door. <laughs> This one's tougher than the one I picked yesterday, Mary. It sure seems to be. But what are we going to find by breaking into this dark room again? Oh, nothing much, Mary. Just this. How Helen Waltham could have been with Harry Matthews in front of Leeds Jewelry Store having a picture taken at 3 o'clock yesterday and still be in her bank at closing time. That's 3 o'clock. I know it's my bank, too. Mm. There, that opened the lock. Good. But about the time, that's impossible, darling. The clock on Leeds Jewelry Store is never wrong. I know it. But why would Helen say she was in her bank at closing time if she wasn't? She was very definite about that. Yeah, I know. Or so you said. Come on. Let's go into the dark room. I want to take a look at that picture again. All right. Wait, I'll turn on the light. There. Blackie, you think the picture of Harry and Helen was faked? Retouched or something? No, it wasn't. Or I would have noticed it. The picture was real. The clock wasn't wrong. So there's only one answer to this whole thing. What? I said there's only one answer, Mary. I didn't say I knew what it was. Oh. Let's see. Do you remember the number of that picture of Harry and Helen? I sure do. 4121. Uh, uh, yeah. Here's the index file. 4121. 4121. Oh, here we are. Mm-hmm. It's a legitimate picture, all right. So where are we? Right back where we started. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Oh, wait a minute. I've got a hunch. This is picture 4121. Let's have a look at picture number 4120 and see what that looks like. Well, what do you think that'll show? Well, I don't know. That's why I want to look at it. 4120, 4120. Ah, here it is, already developed. Yeah, taken at the same spot. That's good. Let me look at it, too. A picture of a woman and a little girl. Well, that's not much. But, Mary, look at the clock behind them. For goodness sake, there's a man on a ladder doing something to it. Yes. Looks as if he's cleaning it. And look, Mary, look at the time. It's 3.30. 3.30? But... Yes. And do you know what that means? It means the picture was taken before picture number 4120, and yet the clock says 3.30. So picture number 4121, showing Harry and Helen, had to be taken after 3.30. Blackie. Then Harry could have killed Paul Blaine. He not only could have, Mary, but he probably did. That guy on the ladder there is obviously Harry's accomplice. He was planted to set back the clock so that Harry could have an alibi when his picture was taken. Wow. Wow is right. So it was Harry and not John Blaine after all. I should have known John acted too guilty to be guilty. Come on. It's going to hurt to do this, but I've got to call Faraday and tell him that he was right about Matthews. <laughs> It's a lovely day for a walk, isn't it, Blackie? Beautiful, Mary. Is that beautiful, Mary, or beautiful Mary? <laughs> Take your choice. Well, I've taken it, and so I thank you, kind sir. Hey, Blackie. Yes? Why did Harry Matthews call Inspector Faraday and tell him you were at the scene of Paul Blaine's murder? Oh, well, that's easy, Mary. Two reasons. He wanted to involve me, and he wanted to make sure the police established the time of the murder at 3 o'clock so his alibi with the fixed-up clock would stand up. He probably was hiding in the back of the pawn shop while we were talking to Paul Blaine the day of the murder. Oh, I see. That guy Matthews was clever, Mary. He never once offered an alibi. He knew it would be too phony if he did. He waited for me to supply it for him, and I did, by discovering that sidewalk photographer's picture. Yeah, he was clever, all right. He killed Paul Blaine for revenge, didn't he? But uh, he made one mistake, you know. Hmm? He didn't go to the trouble to find out where his friend Helen was at exactly three o'clock. No, thanks to her, we broke the case. I said he was glad Faraday didn't involve her. Yeah. Harry was obviously just using it. Hey, yeah, uh, yes, lady. Blackie, did you see what just happened? What? A sidewalk photographer just snapped our picture. Well, how do you like that? Why does everything happen to us? Well, I don't know, but it certainly does. 
Blackie, tell me, how do sidewalk photographers like this fellow know whose picture to take? How? Huh? Well, Mary, that's simple. Snap judgment, that's all. Just snap judgment. Oh. <laughs> 